verse 13. One of the ways in which we meditate is by saying the verse over and over. So if that is a way that works for you, feel free when I give the moment of meditation to just read the verse over and over. So receive this word, word now from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. Let us meditate upon these words. Ready to 
learn of the ways of Jesus, that we might live and love in the knowledge and truth that you, O oh God, are love. Remind us again, O oh God, that we can live, love, and laugh as we abide with you in wisdom and truth, enjoying your mercies to you.
proclamation of the word. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our New Testament reading today comes from James chapter 3, verses 3 to 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. For the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Our Gospel lesson today comes from James chapter 4. Verses 1 through 12. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you suppose, <clears throat> or do you suppose that it's for nothing that the scripture says? God yearns jealously for the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. But he gives all the more grace therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. I read, there's another reading. therefore to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You don't mind it. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt, exalt you. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers and sisters. Whoever speaks evil against another or judges another speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law to judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. So who then are you to judge your neighbor? And next, our next reading is from Mark chapter 9, 30 through 37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to betray, be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. When they came to Christ, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes me. 
it's not me, but the one who sent me. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. God, our living God, who 
Holy Spirit. In every time and every generation, biblical times or today, we find the condition of our spirit, the place God resides, either full or empty. We are empowered or spent. When we are low in spirit, we feel empty. Our spirit seeks God, whether we know it or not. Our spirit longs to be filled with truth and wisdom, which are the things of God. Scripture, specifically in the wisdom literature, describes this seeking as a deep longing for God. Consider Psalm 42.1. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. We may not always realize it is God that we seek. We don't always know when we are thirsty what we are thirsty for. Jesus said, I am the living water. He knew what we needed. Oh, how good and right and true it is to be able to put our longing into words, to declare our thirst in words, recognizing it as our need to be filled. First in this text, James gives us wisdom by saying, those who make peace sow the seeds of justice by their peaceful acts. We get that. Peace begets peace. We know it takes wisdom, faith, and trusting in God to live constantly in God's peace. James says, don't just look at the conflict that might be among you. Look at the source of the conflict. James' readers were living in an atmosphere of constant fights and quarrels. Instead of a climate of peace necessary to produce righteousness. James, through practical advice, focuses on wisdom to help all of us avoid the pitfalls of sin. Early Christians knew wisdom, their wisdom literature and their tradition quite well. For both Jews and early Christians, the concept of wisdom was a central theme. From our Old Testament books of Proverbs, Job's, and Ecclesiastes to the circulated letters of Paul, Wisdom as a gift of God's spirit was held before them. But they were lusting and fighting when they should have been praying and loving, seeking wisdom and doing good works. So James asks, your conflict, is it worldly? Is it because you are living in envy and jealousy? And then following these questions a few verses later, James offers words of wisdom that come as strong advice. I memorized this verse as a Sunday school verse when I was growing up. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now remember, I told you last week the word Satan or devil means God's adversary. So resist God's adversary making good and just choices that are filled with God's wisdom. Every time we make a choice, we are turning towards a direction. That direction can be towards God in love and grace, or away from God towards the things of the world. We can love our neighbor in holy living or turn a blind eye toward them, ignoring Jesus' commandment to love our neighbor. All this and so much more is done within us as we live our faith as spiritual beings. This week I went to experience my nephew's ministry at Restoration Family Farm. It was a time away to learn how to rest and a time of connecting and reflecting. I learned many things. But one thing I learned was that as a child of God created in the image of God, in mind, body, and spirit, in order to rest, I must first identify the kind of rest that I need. It might sound like common sense, but it was very inspirational for me. Do I need mental rest, physical rest, or spiritual rest? The rest must match the need in order for it to be helpful to me. I can physically 
rest to restore my body. And that's the easiest one to identify. It comes from hard work or manual labor. I can stop thinking, studying, or heavily using my mind in redirection, which oddly can be done by manually working. But spiritual rest can only happen in community with God. Let me say that again. Spiritual rest only happens with God. God is the only source that can refill me spiritually. God alone is who can change and transform us fully into the spiritual beings we were created to be. Jesus knew we needed rest. He took time away to pray and to rest. He offered to the disciples, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. I think we forget to do that. Well, at least, you know, I do. We want to be blessed by our spirit. And we want to say to, we want others to say, oh, she or he has such a giving spirit, such a loving spirit, such a kind spirit. All those things come from the work of a healthy, rested person who is nurtured by God's wisdom through a God of love, through an abiding relationship with God's Son, Jesus, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. But only if we are filled can God use us and the things we do, good works, acts of justice, for the benefit of others around us in our community. God alone can empower, develop, and use us as spiritual beings to fulfill what is required of us. And what is that? I remind you of Micah 6, 8. What is required of us? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. Easier said than done, right? But all things are possible with God. So how does even our speaking about spirituality help us to embrace the wisdom of God within us? How do we take simple, straightforward verses like those found in the book of James and speak of our good works and make them be for us deeply spiritual, aligning us with the Spirit of God? Listen to the first verse again. Who is wise and knowledgeable among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. A wise person can be gentle in their dealings with others. And when we are gentle, we show God's wisdom in our actions. A great compliment, especially these days, would be he or she has a gentle spirit. It is that gentle spirit that works its way into the actions lived out in a life of faith. It is an attitude that we can ascribe to as being of God. God is gentle, wise, and loving. Jesus was gentle, wise, and loving. And gentleness, a fruit of the spirit, is not weakness. Wisdom, my friends, does not come from a place of weakness. On the contrary, standing up for wisdom and truth is a hard thing to do. However, as Jesus' disciples, we are called to be gentle, wise, and loving. When the search is on and the question is asked, who is wise and knowledgeable of, among you, we all want our name to float to the top, you know, in a humble kind of way. The culture says that you can find truth out in the world as if it is an easy thing to do. For the Christian, however, we trust in God's wisdom to help us recognize and embrace truth. We find truth. Do we give credit to God when we find it? Who has revealed it to us through knowledge and understanding? Our gospel lesson said the disciples didn't understand what Jesus was saying. They heard his words, but they didn't understand. 
Do we take the time necessary to contemplate our thoughts and actions to ensure we are living holy lives? John Wesley was all about accountability. He called the people to be part of small groups where they could hold each other accountable for their living. Was it holy living? Were there good works and acts of loving kindness and mercy being shown to their neighbors? Jesus wants us to, to stay focused on God. The unexamined, headlong spiritual search, unguided by any predefined boundaries, is bound to result in some people heading down a rabbit hole and others falling for things that the world calls spiritual, but are not necessarily the things of God. The world is filled with a host of counterfeit spiritualities, all in search of happiness. For instance, we can selfishly meditate on ourselves, who we are, and our accomplishments, which might cause us to boast or become proud. Or we can meditate on the goodness of God, the works of God, the salvation of God provided through Jesus the Christ in humility and grace. C.S. Lewis, a great theologian on the topic of faith versus works, says this in his book titled Mere Christianity. Christians have often disputed as to whether what leads the Christian home is good actions or faith in Christ. I have no right really to speak on such a difficult question, but it does seem to me like asking which blade in a pair of scissors is most necessary. End quote. Lewis's book, Mere Christianity, may be a hard read theologically, but this statement is good, and it's a visual analogy that simplifies it to us, that helps us to understand that faith and good works work together like a scissor. Jesus calls us to focus on God, as I said. James calls us to do so through holy living. The grand theme of James' book is wisdom. Wisdom in Jewish tradition and scripture does not refer to intelligence or in a strictly intellectual way, but rather on upright living. Holy living for us is done as we abide with God through our salvation and reconciliation. Holy living is not just for ourselves, but for the good of the community and our relationship with others. Just as I might need to identify the area of need that I need to rest in order for me to be restored, Jesus explains, Jesus teaches, and James reiterates that we must seek the source of our conflicts and disputes in order to identify if they are of the world or of God, human-based or godly-based. Are we submitting to God and God's wisdom? Is that the direction we are facing? Is it towards God? Are we in Christ or of the world? We want to be in Christ. In closing, I want to share with you the words of a hymn, spoken instead of sung. When we are living, it is in Christ Jesus. And when we're dying, it is in the Lord. Both in our living and in our dying, we belong to God. We belong to God. Through all our living, we our fruits must give. Good works of service are for offering. When we are giving or when receiving, we belong to God. We belong to God. Let us, as the people of God, embrace the wisdom that we live by the Spirit. We are guided to be wise through the Spirit. And God's wisdom, therefore, will be seen in our living. Thanks be to God. receive from you the gifts we need. You offer us wisdom, mercy, 
love, and grace in a steady stream that is good and right, perfect and true. Help us to be open to receive from you that which we stand in need of most. It's been a long week, O oh God. Again, the reports all tell us there is no peace. War and violence continue among us. There is death and sorrow and mourning amongst mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, friends and neighbors. Reveal yourself to us that we might share hope in your world. We thank you for your wisdom that teaches us of you. We thank you for the help of the Holy Spirit as we discern what you call us to do or to be. In our seeking, speak loud. Act boldly so we will know it is you, Lord God. Hear us as we together, not just by rote, but by obedience, pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
May we recognize, nurture, respect, and support God's call on each of our lives in all of our days. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.